and welcome back to my channel. Unless you're new here, and then just welcome. My name is Rusty, and this is my channel where I talk about, discuss, and celebrate my favorite films, mostly horror, and my favorite music, mostly metal. And we are going to continue on with the Rambo franchise with Rambo 4. Now this is the Rambo Blu-ray 5 film collection. It's got all five of them. Very beautiful. Very, very glad to have it. Talk about upgrading everything at one time. And we are on Rambo 4. Now Rambo 4 was released in 2008. Obviously, during the middle of all of that, let's make a sequel, but give it no name. Right? It's not Scream 5. It's just Scream. It's not Rambo 4. It's just Rambo. What was up with that, anybody? I, uh, what, what was that about? Do you have any idea how hard it makes for you to, like, search for it on, like, stores and stuff? It was very fucking irritating. Anyway, this is Rambo 4. Rambo Burma. Rambo. The Burma collect. You know, the Burma connection. I don't know. Couldn't you have done anything? Anyway, I'm just going to leave that alone. This is, stupid. this is Rambo 4, and it was released in 2008. It was directed by Sylvester Stallone himself. It was written by Art Matrastelli, Sylvester Stallone, and David Morrell, who had wrote the previous three, Sylvester and David. So it stars Sylvester Stallone, Julie Bentz, and Matthew Marsden. Love me some Matthew Marsden. And you're like going, I don't know who that is. Well, go find out. So, Rambo 4 kicks off, and we are, uh, Rambo is still kind of living the same monkish, isolated existence that he had been living for the, you know, for those three movies. However, now he works as a, a snake catcher. He catches snakes for a snake show, like a snake circus. You know, cobras and pythons and stuff like that in Thailand. So he's still living this, you know, monkish life when he is approached by a group of health uh, aid workers. Now, the film had opened with this montage, a very hard-to-watch montage, of the Burmese Civil War that was taking place in Burma. And so the this group of healthcare uh healthcare, I keep wanting to say healthcare workers. This group of aid workers, they stop by uh wanting to you know, to hire him to take them up river to Burma where they want to do their missionary stuff and um deliver you know, food and assistance and stuff like that. Now, he, he initially refuses because he don't want no part of that. But uh, Sarah, the main one of these healthcare workers, along with Michael, they're the two main ones, the only two I can remember their names, um, she convinces him, you know, using the guilt trip about um, helping, you know, helping brutalized people and all the stuff that's going to um, get our heroes dander up, you know, because that's what Rambo's about, helping people and stuff. So she uses that to get him to do it. Now, he ends up, you know, t during the meantime, we are introduced to the Burmese army, right, and their brutal assaults on the villages and things like that that are taking place in Burma. Um, we get to know this uh, specific commander who is like a really brutal, like all Rambo movies, you have to have this, this extremely brutal um, villain. So we see him, we see them horribly killing and, and ravaging villages in Burma. So that's where we kind of get to know him. Rambo does take them up the river. We do have an action sequence where they have to quietly slip by a river pirate hangout they don't manage to do that however the pirates do approach them try to get them are obviously going to do ugly things to them 
Rambo ends up killing them all as usual. <laughs> So he, runs, he ends up killing them all. Uh, of course, the aid workers are all, you know, goody-goody about that. You know, how could you? Murder is murder and stuff like that. And it's like, really? Well, you know, he just saved your asses. What do you think about that? I'm so, like, how appreciative. You know what I mean? So he ends up delivering them. He's even going to, you know, help them, but no, they don't want it. So they leave. They leave and go on about their business, and he ends up going back to where he where he lives. Now the villagers welcome the aid workers. The aid workers are there, giving them medicine, you know, tending the wounds, doing all of the you know bleeding heart stuff that they do. When the village is attacked by that very army most of the aid workers along with most of the village are killed some very very brutal scenes Sarah is taken Michael's taken a couple of the other aid workers are taken um, but they don't last long and they're taken back to this encampment where they are of course you know through into the POW type cages and things like that and we see this brutal army now the leader of the missionaries actually shows a backup to the snake circus where he informs Rambo about the disappearance of these aid workers and at first he's just like oh, well you know what do you expect um, but he asks him that you know he will pay him um, that he has assembled a team, a, a small team of mercenaries to go up there and try to rescue those aid workers and they just want to ride up the river. So he agrees to do that and he goes with them, takes them up to the river, um, up the river and you can tell, I mean this is a group, the, the, especially the leader of this mercenary group, he is like I'd have never, I'd have never made it up the river with him. I mean, he'd have been crocodile bait before we ever got to where he was supposed to go, because that's the kind of dude, that kind of dude, the way he talked to Rambo, and you got balls when you're talking to Rambo like he does. But he talked to all of them that way, and there's just some people that you run across that just need a good killing. You know what I mean? That dude needed a good killing. And I would have just been really okay if Rambo had just like gutted him and threw him over the thing, you know, as fish bait. Would have been fine with me. The other guys are okay, you know. Um, and that's where Matthew Mar Marsden comes in. He's one of them. He's uh, he's schoolboy. That's his name. In it, schoolboy. I don't know what that's about. But so since I'm not following my notes. <laughs> so they show up. They manage to get to where he had left them off. They are assholes, of course, and it's like, don't follow us. You're the boatman, so you stay with the boat. And Rambo is just like, man, this dude is like, you know, he's like that walking asshole in Pink Floyd's, you know, another brick in the wall. It's just like, wow. You know, it's like he took special classes and got a degree in assholeism, you know. So, but, you know, so he's like, okay, fine, whatever. So they take off. They get to the village where these aid workers are supposed to be. And, of course, they see all of the, the blood, the guts, the horror that was left behind by these, you know, by this military group. And um, sure enough, a battalion if you want to call it that, a squad, a, a, a small group of these assholes show up while the mercenaries are in the village. They show up, going to torture some more of their own people, you know. Um, they have this game that they like to play where they throw mines in the rice paddies or the you know, marshes type thing and make them run across, you know, it to see who gets, it, it's, dis it's disturbing. So they're having to sit there and watch that uh, when all of a sudden Rambo starts taking them out like they didn't even know he was there, you know, but he had followed them. He started taking them out, which was pretty exquisite, and now he sort of takes control 
after a fashion. He sort of takes control. He kind of puts that asshole mercenary in his place, the leader. And it's sort of like, I'll let you pretend to be the leader from now on. But uh, I think everybody here knows that it's me. You know, I've just usurped your position. But we'll pretend that you're still the leader. So that was kind of like the understanding that you got from it. So they end up going and finding. They have like this, they had met this guide and uh, this little kid and a, 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 an older guy. And they did take them to the compound of this, this little army mercenary where we see all kinds of horrible things going on. Uh, they had fed one of the guys to the pigs, and that was pretty disturbing because, like, they had strung him up, and they strung him up. You know, like, the pigs can only get, like, they string them up in a way that, like, the pigs can only get to right above your knees. So, basically, you just hang there while pigs chew you, chew the bottom of your legs off until you die. So, yeah, that's the kind of sweet army we're dealing with you know what I mean so they do they they end up going in there they have this huge battle um, he does manage to the mercenaries manage to rescue I think like two of the guys that's all that's left uh, including Michael and then Stallone he gets you know Rambo gets um, Sarah so once that's occurred they're kind of split up because the mercenaries, you know, the leader asshole, he's not going to wait for Sarah. He takes Michael and the rest of them and his whole team like moves on uh, going back to the boat. This leaves Rambo and Sarah separated. So they try to get, they, they manage to get away. They're going through the woods, the jungle, I'm sorry, down in Florida. It's called the woods. I guess in Thailand you call it, or Burma you call it, the jungle. So they're going through the jungle, and um, the other guys, they do manage to get to the boat. And we learn a little bit more about Schoolboy, because he shows up, and that's how, that's how Sarah and Rambo had gotten out of the thing, even though the others had left. Schoolboy, he like is like an expert sniper we're talking like that dude from Jack Reacher type sniper and so he was taking them out and that's how so it's them three the other mercenaries they're going on to the boat and these three are trying to make it there themselves so he happened to have a claymore on him the schoolboy did and the army of course that general commander general whatever you would want to call him the leader he is like beyond pissed off you know so they got the dogs after them and stuff and so Rambo is like give me the claymore so he sets up the claymore as a trap and he sends schoolboy and Sarah onto the boat while he distracts the dogs distracts the thing the people he manages to take out pretty much that whole fucking battalion with that claymore, which was a big, big, big boom, if you know what I'm saying, <laughs> when that thing went off. So, Schoolboy and Sarah manage to get back to the boat, but they can't get to it because those people are there. The colonel, that, that general... And a few of his men are there. Rambo surprises them by also popping up still alive. The three, the three of them now are like, what are we going to do? You know, because they're sitting there watching those other mercenaries and Michael being like beaten and, and tortured and everything. And that's when they come up with a plan. They're going to have to go for it. So between Schoolboy and um, Rambo, Rambo manages to get to the truck that's got that like Gatlin thing. It's almost like that thing that that the dude was carrying in Predator, you know. Crank that bitch, you know, <laughs> like a rail gun. That's what it was. It was like a rail gun. It wasn't like a cranker, but 
Yeah, it was sort of like a rail gun. So I have never seen so you know such a high body count. I mean, that was like wow. Uh, now this is the time I only saw one little thing that I complained about this this movie, and that is during this big gigantic boss battle showdown. There were like a lot, a lot, a lot of good kills. You know, it was it was a phenomenal scene. However, there was some CGI shit that was noticeable, and and I'm very forgiving. You know, I mean, look at some of my favorite movies. I think the Nail Gun Massacre is a fucking masterpiece. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> but. Uh, so I'm very forgiving, but uh, the only complaint I had about this movie was during this scene, and that was that there were a lot of those, that, well not a lot, but there was a noticeable amount of those shots that were, you know, and the kills that were extremely noticeably CGI. CGI holes, CGI blood spray. Um, so, yeah, they, I think they added some in. Now, there was enough practical and enough real that the scene is still phenomenal. But just like three or four times, I was like, oh, that was not cool. <laughs> you know, so out of the hundred kills that you see, there's only three or four of them. But they were noticeable to me. And that's the only complaint I had about this film was that, you know, they, they flubbed on a, just a couple of seconds of CGI here and there. But um, so we do manage to see the big giant showdown. Even the Burmese rebels showed up to assist them. So that whole army thing was like wiped out. And of course, we got to see Rambo dispatch that commander in exquisite fashion. And um, so, schoolboy and Sarah and Michael. And uh, Rambo, of course, uh, they all survived. I think pretty much all of the rest of the mercenaries, that might have been the only four. Do you remember any of the others? I think they were the only four to make it out. At least that's the way they made it seem. Yeah, I don't, rem I don't know. But So Sarah and Michael, they escaped and Rambo and Schoolboy and they all go back you know and uh, yeah put Rambo, Schoolboy, Sarah and Michael are left they go back uh, to their house or to where he's staying at that snake ranch and then the movie ends with us seeing that Rambo has finally returned back to the United States so I guess from the time that he left in uh, Rambo 2, yeah, in Rambo 2, um, he was still in the States, you know, when that all happened, wasn't he? Oh my God, I just did the series. I'm losing track. But he's finally back in the States, and we see him walking towards his ranch, his dad's ranch. We see his name on the mailbox, and the movie ends with him back in the States. He's finally come home, full circle, because you, you, you heard him, like, have little flashbacks about, you know, the colonel telling him, you know, you had to come full circle and stuff like that to, you know, understand who you were. So he's back in the States, and the movie ends with him walking down the driveway, returning back to the ranch where he was born and raised. And that's how this movie ended. Um, I gave it a 9 out of 10. The first three were 10 out of 10s. This one was like a 9.4 maybe out of 10. I still absolutely adore it. And it is a fantastic continuation of the story. I absolutely, the, the, the gore, you know, because let me tell you, 2 really stepped up the action and really pumped up a little bit with the gore but three and four three and four like went uh, like over the top you know what i mean i mean each one of them got like bloodier and gorier because the kills in this movie are like 
extremely cool. And the storyline was great. It continued the story of John Rambo's life. I really enjoyed that. Um, it this whole series up to now has flowed very well um, in the life of this person. It reminds me a lot of the British crime series that's like my top ever British show, and that's Prime Suspect. Helen Mirren's evolution. Just like this Rambo franchise, which went from what, 2019 back to 1982 that's almost the same way that prime suspect did you know there are seven prime suspect films and they range from like 1994 up to like 2023 so you know because or 2022 something like that but um, so you got to see this character age you got to see this character evolve and just like we watched the evolution of Jane Tennyson and Prime Suspect um, of that character we over what 30 years we watched this evolution of John Rambo through his lifetime so I think that's kind of neat to have a franchise that spaces the movies out or has enough of them like I said there's seven Prime Suspect films um, so spacing it out and or just having so many that like 40 years later you're still doing that series with the same character that's the main point john rambo has been the same character jane tennyson was the same character and so i i i think it was fantastic his evolution his continuing on in the life of john rambo was fantastic and that was Rambo 4 and we'll be finishing it up next love you miss you bye always remember you'll never well of course you should never forget always remember and never forget because you will never forget that you are a very very special person DNA proves it you're the only one of you on this entire planet that's what you are isn't that special isn't that worthy? Doesn't it have value? Give yourself that. So that was Rambo 4. Loved it. 9.4 out of 10. Really enjoyed it. Had no complaints about this movie whatsoever. Except for a couple of bad CGI shots. And that was it. So I will see you in the next. Love you, miss you, bye. Always remember and never forget. You are a very, very special person. And I will see you in the next. Bye.